Yellow Crystal from Adventuring with Crystal. Crystal. And this week I wanted to talk about ecotourism. I know it's kind of a catchy little buzzword right now, and though it's also something that is actually really important in the world of travel. When I am planning trips for folks or trips for myself, one of the things that's most important for me is to connect with the culture and the land. I want to connect with myself and the people that I'm with, but also I want to learn something about the history and the culture and the people and the organisms that make up this environment that I'm in that is so different from my own. And that's why I think that ecotourism is so important. It's because it's about making sure that that can happen for generations to come. There are so many really amazing reasons for ecotourism. First of all, it is making sure that it's sustainable and that for, for many, 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 play, many years to come, that there will still be something for our kids to see. I remember when we were in Greece, they are putting in so many different rules around being able to see all of their ancient sites. And I thought, you know, if everybody that went there picked up just one pebble, just because they were like, this is so ancient, then after a while, there would be nothing left. And that's why we have to really be so aware of our impact, not just in a really kind of lip service way, but in a true way where we're being responsible for what we're doing while we're in a space that we're not treading on things and picking up those little pebbles from the beach that we think are beautiful, but that will detract from the overall effect over many years. Another thing that's so important is that we do want to be mindful of the cultures that are there. That's why when we go places, I love to go to the markets and see the actual goods that are being sold by the people who live there, not things that were made in another country, made of plastic that are going to break and be really cheap, but the things that are native that were made by the hands of the people who were there that's actually putting money back into those hands and those families and that culture. And I'm learning from them also. I haven't been someplace where they don't want to talk about the things that they've made and why they're making them and what's traditional about them. And so I'm going to learn so much more than if I buy a snow globe. And there's nothing against the snow globes. We have plenty of those in our houses. But also there are so many natural, beautiful pieces of art that we can get as souvenirs that will make a really big impact on the communities that we're visiting. And along with that is that we want our tourism to actually help the economies of the places that we're going. It's often that when you go on a vacation, you're going to the places that are owned mostly by corporations because those are the places where it's a little easier. It's done for you. If I go to an amusement park, I don't really have to think about putting together the itinerary and how am I going to get there and how am I going to get around. So ecotourism is not always the simplest choice, but it is the choice that's actually going to put money back into the hands of the people who live there in a meaningful way, not just a paycheck, but actually hiring them so that they're getting a bigger portion of what is it. So thinking about boutique hotels, thinking about tours by locals instead of tours by conglomerations, thinking about, again, a buying of those crafts and souvenirs that were made on site while we were there. I think about, and when we went to Gatlinburg, we went on the artist trail and we got a lot of Christmas gifts from one shop that was someone who was doing ceramics. And that was a lot more meaningful to us, to the people that we gave the gift to, and to the community, because again, it was something that was made there, that that money was all going right there to local folks doing something for their communities. There's a lot of ways that you can take part in sustainable travel. First is to think about eco-friendly accommodations. So, you know, there's a lot of ways that our accommodations are trying to be eco-friendly and it goes beyond just not having turn down service or not washing your towels every day. There are a lot of hotels that are now 
building in sustainable ways that are becoming part of their community and part of the environment instead of something different, making sure that their footprint is smaller and that they're hiring local people to be their guides and to be part of all parts of it, just the, the guiding of them, building it through working there, through what they're going to offer, hiring local chefs so that you're getting really amazing food that is local, which is another way for you to take part in this eco travel is to make sure that you're eating local also. A really good rule of thumb is that if it was frozen or if it's something that is American and you are not in America, it is probably not really local. So think about if I'm on the ocean seafood and what kinds of things seafood what lives here and what I'd be eating. So thinking through those things and finding places where the locals eat also, you're going to get such an authentic experience if you're off the beaten path. You know, when we were in Greece, my daughter wanted to go to McDonald's one day because she wanted to see what it was like. And I am all about that, but I did not even order anything because I don't need chicken nuggets. What I wanted were the things that were really made there that were fresh. And my girls laugh at me all the time because I ate so many Greek salads, which were different than the Greek salads that I get here in Houston, because first of all, it was made differently, but also it was so fresh because everything was grown there. And it was almost like I was eating tomatoes right out of my backyard garden, if I had a backyard garden. Another way to be part of ecotourism is to use kind of sustainable travel. So finding one place and staying there is one way of doing that because then you're not hopping planes and trains and renting cars to go from place to place to place. So there is this slow travel mentality where I'm in one place and I'm digging really deep into it. But also, be like the folks where you are. If I'm in Amsterdam, I need to be riding bikes. It might be scary and I wouldn't really know exactly what to do, but I bet it wouldn't take me long before I got into the traffic and knew what was going on. And that would give you again, that experience of being connected to the place in a different way than you normally are. Another way that you can be really mindful is in your wildlife encounters from the encounters that you would have in Africa to elephant encounters in Thailand to swimming with dolphins and sea turtles. These are all things that you want to be really mindful of and research before you go. There are so many companies now that are taking a different view of how to have wildlife encounters. We as humans are never going to want to stop seeing the great migration but there are ways that we can do that that will limit our impact on that environment, but still let us have this amazing experience of seeing something that is purely natural and awe-inspiring. The final tip I have for eco-travel is to leave no trace. And I think that goes without saying sometimes, but sometimes not because I will walk down the streets and places and see all kinds of litter but while you're there. Make sure that you're taking care of the environment that you're in. And even if it's not your trash, pick it up, find a trash can, be a part of this movement to leave the earth better than we found it. And then there's a few places that I wanted to recommend that you visit if you are really wanting to kind of dig into this sustainable travel, eco travel type of mindset. The first is Costa Rica. They are so well known for A, their variety of landscapes, but also for how they are taking care of their land. So check them out for all of the beautiful beaches and jungles, but also the ways that they are making sure that those lands are there for everyone to enjoy for a very long time. The next place is Slovenia. It is beautiful. Over 50% is this lush, gorgeous forest, and they have really great measures in place to take care of that. They have fabulous pedestrian walkways, helping people to learn that it's not just about visiting the castles and the museums, but also to get into nature, go on hiking trails, be part of this gorgeous green space that they have. The third one is New Zealand, which almost goes without saying, they are forerunners in sustainable travel and eco travel, and they just do an amazing job 
of keeping their gorgeous, gorgeous lands gorgeous and available to everyone. Another place that I cannot wait to visit is Iceland. They are leaders in geothermal and hydroelectric energy and just really leading the pack on making sure that they are using what their country has to benefit everyone, their own people, but the people who are coming to visit and making it so that, again, it's going to be easy for you to take part in things that are going to be uplifting and helpful to their country. And the last one is the place that is probably number one on my list right now. It might have to be the next place that I visit after Thailand, and that's Bhutan. Y'all, they measure their gross happiness index. And to me, that is amazing. People there are used to walking, walk everywhere. They measure their time and how long it takes to walk to places instead of how long it takes to drive. And it's small. It's one place that is just so tiny, but everything is done with such care. And you will have an amazing immersive experience into the into their culture learning so much and being a part of a solution instead of maybe sometimes how travel becomes a part of a problem if you are interested in any of these places or any other places at all please feel free to give me a call i would love to chat with you about ecotourism and finding the best vacation for you and your family so that you can connect with each other and with the culture that you're going to visit.